Hello everyone, this is Tina Schmidt. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be doing some waterfalls with very dramatic black colored rocks. And so um, I'm going to show you how I approach that. My color is very limited palette. I've got cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, vermilion, and burnt umber, and sapia, maybe a little bit of neutral tint. I always mix up my own green. So I'm starting with nothing on there really, uh, just white paper, arches, 140 pound cold press, and I'm using a very oversized uh, hog hair brush. It's a very stiff brush. And I usually start going from the background into the middle ground and the foreground. Nothing says it has to be cut in stone. So what you're gonna see in this video is after I I think I'm done. I actually come back in and rework some things for the better. And I don't always advise reworking. Sometimes it's not salvageable and so you have to just uh, start from scratch. But in this case, um, what, I, what I did was I went back over the work and it was a good improvement. Right now I'm dropping in the background and I mix the green with um, ultramarine and I use uh, the lemon yellow, which makes a very bright, uh, kind of sunny kind of green. And I used a wet brush only on the top portion of the uh, paper. And now I'm blotting out uh, that area where I want more of that sunlight to appear to come through. So it's wet on top, wet on wet. I use a weasel hair calligraphy brush, a very inexpensive Chinese um, watercolor brush. It's it's a calligraphy brush also and uh, I'm just uh, dropping in some of the finer details and what I like about this brush is that um, it's very um, unpredictable in the sense you could split the hairs up and it makes a very natural um, look. This is a slanted flat brush about an inch wide and I'm starting to drop in the rocks. I don't want it too wet um, I'll wet it with some paint and then maybe wipe it off a little bit so it's slightly, um, uh, it's not sopping wet, but I will get some brush strokes in there and that's what I'm after. I let the uh, blue color come through. I'm using blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and you can actually use any color for rocks. I mean, it's amazing. You can do purpley rocks and orangey rocks and whatever. So. What I'm after here though, in this case, is a very dark, almost lava looking rock, as though we're looking through some tropical jungle where some lava has flowed over the many, many millennia and the, uh, the overgrowth is, is uh, the jungle has grown around it. And then the water still continues to fall through these rivers and streams and things. So, I'm working a little bit around some of that uh, foliage area I started, but that's okay because I'm going to go back over it again. And I like to disperse the white of the uh, paper through the um, brush stroke so that it's not one solid brush stroke. I like to have it broken up. And now I'm dipping into, if I hadn't said it before, a little bit of cerulean blue. Um, it's a cooler blue and you can use it with a little titanium white. I know there's a lot of artists have different opinions about using watercolor white, but what it does is it softens. You won't get so much of a transparent look to it, but you will get a soft glow if you use the white uh, in, in creating splashes of water. And so I do use a little bit of white now and then, especially if I don't want the paint to look granulated, which Cerulean blue can granulate very quickly. So it adds, it, add, it acts like a uh, kind of a smoothing uh, look to it. Um, so the composition really is about this vertical waterfall as this water is plunging down into the, the lower area. And I'm working over the rocks here a little bit. And I'm kind of trying to see where this water wants to go, how it's coming down and where it may splash up when it hits a surface. 
so uh, it's plunging. I wanted to get the idea that this is a rapid fall and it's plunging downward and collecting into big splashes, big wells down below. Now while that's drying, I'm gonna work over the top a little bit with wet on dry, or at least partially dry. And I'm using the weasel hair brush. If it was too heavy, uh, you'll see me switch out with a very fine brush, especially when I'm trying to pick out um, details on certain leaves. And I'll switch back and forth going into building the second layer of my background here. That weasel brush works fine. It's, um, you can find it at Daisao, believe it or not, for very inexpensive. I think it was under $2. <laughs> so I don't like to spend a whole lot of money on brushes when I can afford not to and get what I need out of them. But sometimes I will spend the money on a nice, decent brush. Um, it depends what I'm after. Usually I'm after texture. That's the one thing a paint, good paintbrush can offer me is texture. And its ability to um, spread the hairs and carry the paint right. So I'm not an out-of-the-box painter. I don't always resort to my round brush. So now I'm kind of sculpting out the form of the water. And water does have form, believe it or not. Um, how it lays over other surfaces, how fast the uh, waterfall is going, is it trickling or is it spraying or is it roaring down? A lot of that will influence how you interpret your waterfall flow. And so here what I'm doing is trying to break up that straight line vertical direction downward. I want to slow the eye down just a little and make it as though there's some rocks under that surface that's that water is hitting as it goes down. And you kind of let the water color paint itself um, whether you're doing water or rocks or foliage there's these sort of randomness to it that um, actually is quite appealing if you can let go of trying to control and illustrate everything and let the nature of that uh, watercolor sort of take over or, or work in harmony with it um, it makes a big difference in the outcome So now I've got the architecture of the water pretty much where I want it, I want to work it out. I don't have to explain every single thing in what's going on in the painting. Um, kind of leave some of that up for the natural imagination. And that's a real important key is the psychological aspect of painting is to let the viewer's eye fill in the work. So. In a way, less is more. You can paint it, but if you try to illustrate it too much, you leave nothing to the imagination or nothing for the randomness that happens, what appears to happen in nature. The way things like to grow out and overlap, the way, um, you know, the, the way the water falls one day. Um, if you watch a waterfall long enough, you're gonna see there's a repetition to it in terms of how it hits the stones and the way it's hitting, but it will never be identical. Every drop is different. So you got to allow some randomness to come into uh, the painting, as long as there's not uh, breaking the laws of gravity. In other words, um, you keep it where it, it's, we can follow it as a viewer. So you're going to see here, 
as we move along, I'm just, uh, I've pretty much got what I want. The rest of it is really just deciding um, how not to overwork it while still improving it. So I've got that in, almost in the middle, not quite, but a little off to the left. I've got a shadowy thing going on in my waterfall. And so this is where the real lesson comes in on this video is, you know, do we bring that out? Do we submerge it more? What do we do with it? And suddenly it becomes a problematic thing. So the purpose of this video sort of went in a direction I didn't expect. Um, and now it's going to be about how to come back over and work and it. save. It's not just about saving the painting, but it's about really continuing its process of development. And uh, here now what I'm doing is splashing. So I'm using the toothbrush in pure titanium white with a little bit of water and I'm creating a splash effect. I use a wet paper towel, not, not soaking wet, but damp. Um, to blot out the areas where I don't necessarily want those white drops to go or if they're too gloppy you know they get really big sometimes and look unnatural so um, a little splattering with the brush and sometimes a little scumbling in there with the brush so see I've got this rock now that's emerging Ooh, let's pick out that bug I've got this rock emerging and um, I'm creating the splash of that uh, waterfall and I'm not I'm like okay do we keep that rock in there is it enough or is it too much or is it not enough and you'll see as we go along I walk away from it a little bit and I work on other areas of the painting and then I try to see if, uh, if that thing is still bothering me again So now we're getting the rocks and the water to speak the same language. We're getting that where the rain, uh, the water um, pours down on it and splashes around it. I've got my left hand shielding areas where I really don't want it to go too much. I'm using a very fine tip um, they call it a rig brush uh, I mean a twig brush or sometimes it's called a rigger it's real um, long slender bristles like a number two or three whatever and I'm just creating these water textures water straight strands I'm using pure titanium white Sometimes I'll use the little bit of green to come in and over, overlap some foliage up top with that brush. And I decided to come in and put some small tiny flowers, little red flowers, just little accents here and there. Um, like, I don't know, little baby breath type. Just something to add some accent to it. And then what happens is, you know, I think I'm done. 
but something still bothers me about this work. So you're never really done until you're really done. And just because you put your signature on it doesn't mean you cannot go back to it. So yeah, I'm thinking, okay, but there's something still bothering me about it. And it has to do with this, this other rock, but we'll get to that in a minute. So I decide to put some little more accents on those flowers. Not a lot. A few twigs. Can use a little bit of the white in there so it can paint nicely over that black. And I'm just using watercolor black. I'm not using any ink. So this worked fine for me. And then um, I said, okay, that rock that is underneath that fall is wanting to come out. Otherwise, it just looks like water doesn't know how to fall downhill. And so I come back in after I let it dry a few minutes. That part there I'm not real happy with, so I'm going to come back in. Um, once I get this foliage done, I'm going to come back in there and really tackle that, uh, that rock. I say, okay, it's suspicious hanging there like that. So why not bring it out? Why hide it? It just looked funny. It looked like water didn't know how to fall down gravity very well. So I came back in probably a few minutes later. Maybe it was an hour later. I don't know. I said, you know, there's something about that that bothers me. I'm going to go back in there. And I did, and it was actually an improvement because... Water didn't look like it was jumping up for nothing. Now we can see it emerge. Now I'm coming in to get some water spray around it to help it uh, feel as though that water is just really enjoying splashing over that rock. Now we have an explanation for that funky little bulge going on under the water there. There's nothing wrong with retouching your work or coming back over it. Once, if you feel something is not right with it, it's it, no sense in getting frustrated. Just look at what the, the painting wants to tell you. If there's something else about it, you can bring, bring its magic out. Anyway, I think we're almost done here. Um, a few little touches and I'll be done. I want to thank you. Please like and subscribe and uh, come back and visit some more and I'll be happy to um, take some of your suggestions. Be safe, God bless you, and have a wonderful day and keep painting. Thank you for coming by.